Oh, dear. Are you all ready to boogie? Yeah! Let's boogie! Dear witnesses, dear sir. Oh, dear. This is so dear much fun. Dear witnesses, Hello, hello, hello. My name is Mrs. Dipsworth, and I am coming to you live. I've always wanted to say that. I am coming to you live from the Lenora Rolla Heritage Center Museum. Now, I am here for a little bit of story time. Now, this is not your average story time, so I want you to strap on your seatbelts, get ready, because we're going to have a wonderful time. Now, if you don't know, Oh, a little bit about me. I am Mrs. Dipsworth, and I, I know everything. I know everything there is to know about everything in the whole wide world. Hmm. Some call it magic. I'll tell you about that a little bit later, but I want you to relax and enjoy now, before we jump into story time, I want to uh, explain a little something to you. Story time is much more than sitting and listening to your parent or grandparent or whomever or yourself read a story. In order to really enjoy a story, there's a few things that you need to know. We don't just look at the words on the paper or look at the pictures if you can't quite read yet there is more to it because in order to really enjoy a good story obviously you have to use your eyes because you want to see the words you want to see the pictures but i'm willing to bet that you didn't know that you also have to use your ears. You have to use your ears because, oh dear, you want to be able to listen to whomever is reading or maybe the sound of your own voice or maybe, just maybe, you imagine that you hear the sounds going on in the book like jungle sounds or animal sounds or music sounds or whatever. <laughs> now, you use your eyes and you use your ears. Now, you also use your mouth. Oh, Mrs. Dipsworth, how do you use your mouth to enjoy a story? It's simple. You use your mouth to taste the wonderful things in the story. Now, of course, it's virtual. You're using your imagination up here. But you think about the taste of something like, oh, dear. Oh, dear. I, my grandmother used to make these amazing chocolate chip cookies. And they were so gooey. So, oh. Oh, my dear. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got sidetracked. But you think about the taste of the things that you see in the book. Is there food in the book? Is there a bad taste of something in the book? Last but not least, you use your nose. What do we do with our noses? Well, we smell things, of course. What do we smell? Use your imagination. What do you smell in the book? Do you smell something that's tasty like my grandmother's chocolate chip gooey cookies? <laughs> I'm not going there again. <laughs> no, anything you can imagine. So now we use our eyes to see the words, to see the pictures. We use our ears so that we can hear the music, hear the sounds in the book. We use our mouth because Perhaps there is something that we can taste in the book. Last but not least, we use our nose so that we can smell the smells in the book. Now, I want you to say with me nice and loudly now, eyes, oh no, 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 I said loudly, loudly, yep, yep. eyes, Whew. all right, one more time, nice and loud, eyes, good ears, good mouth, Oh dear, nose. Okay, one more time, faster. Eyes, ears, mouth, nose. Again, eyes, ears, mouth, nose. And now here's where the song comes in. I'm always up for a good song. So, um, now, oh dear, how does it go? It goes, 
eyes and ears and mouth and nose. That is how the story goes. Would you like to try that? Let's try it with no music first, really slowly. Here we go, let's try it. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. That is how the story goes. Oh my goodness, that was wonderful. Now, let's try it with music. All right, here we go. All right. Hmm. Oh. Oh dear. Are you ready? Five, six, seven, and eyes and ears and mouth and nose. That is how the story goes. That was wonderful. Now, I would like for you to try it one more time, even louder now. Are you ready? Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. That is how the story goes. Oh, give yourselves a wonderful round of applause. Good job. Good job. We'll stop the music now. I am going to depend upon you to practice on that at home. All right. Now that you have your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your nose ready for story time, let's read a book. Today we are going to be reading a special book called Where the Wild Things Are. Oh dear, that's wonderful. Story and Pictures by Maurice Sendak. What a wonderful thing to be able to write the story and draw the pictures. How wonderful. Oh dear, all right. Where the Wild Things Are. Here we go. The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind. Oh dear. <laughs> Whenever someone starts making mischief, oh dear, of one kind and another, oh dear. His mother called him Wild Thing, and Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. Oh dear. Oh dear, that must have made him very hungry. Oh dear, let's see here now. That very night in Max's room, a forest grew. A forest grew. Oh dear. And grew. Oh dear. Everyone say, oh dear. Oh, oh dear. Oh, oh and grew until his ceiling hung with vines and the walls became the world all around. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. All right, here, let's see here now. And an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max. He sailed off through the night and day and in and out of weeks and almost over a year, to where the wild things are. Oh dear, oh dear. Have any of you ever sailed on a boat? Oh dear, yep, I, yep, not me. I only like to do water in a bathtub. Yes, all right. When he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared in terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. <laughs> okay, I was attempting to be scary. I don't think I was. I think it was just funny. <laughs> oh dear. Till Max said, be still, and tamed them with a magic trick. That was my magic. Of staring into their yellow eyes without blinking once. Hmm. And they were frightened and they called him the most wild thing of all. Oh dear, look at him, look at him, look at him. They're so afraid, oh dear, oh dear. And they made him king of all wild things. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start. Oh dear, what is a wild rumpus? What is a wild rumpus? Oh dear, that's what a wild rumpus is. <laughs> oh dear. All right, let's go. Here we go. And more rumpus. I think that's what that's called. Oh 
food, yeah, they're hanging from trees and having a really great time. And more rompers. Oh dear, that looks like sort of what you're probably doing in your room most of the time. And your parents are wondering what is going on in there. Now stop, Max said, and sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. And Max, the king of all the wild things, was lonely. He wanted to be somewhere someone loved him best of all. Then all around him, from far away, across the world, he smelled Mm, he smelled good things to eat, so he gave up being the king of where the wild things are. And let's see what happens, oh dear. But the wild things cried, oh, please don't go. We'll eat you up. We love you so. And Max said, no. The wild things roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> and he sailed back over a year, in and out of weeks, through a day. Oh dear, oh dear, he's falling asleep, bless his heart. Look at there, poor Max, it's a long time to be in a boat. And into the night of his very own room where he found his supper waiting for him. <laughs> How dear, how dear. And it was still hot. <laughs> now what do we say at the end of a good book? The end. All right, friends. Now, what did we learn from where the wild things are? Oh, dear, there's so many things that we learned. First of all, we learned that sometimes the things that we are afraid of, like animals of any kind and monsters that we think are in the closets and under the bed, those things are not real. You see how Max just imagined them and he just showed up to where they were and in the blink of an eye, he was back in his room, all alone. It was all right here in his head. There were no monsters, there were no creepy things, but if there are animals like, oh, lions and tigers and bears, oh my! <laughs> don't, okay, don't worry. Anyway, if there are animals more like cats or dogs or things of that nature, we should be careful if they don't live with us, but we shouldn't be afraid. If there are bigger animals like what you see at the zoo, or if you get a chance to hop into a boat and go overseas, and you might go to Asia, you might go past Africa, you might go to all of these wonderful places. What kind of animals live there? What kind of animals live in Asia? What kind of animals live in Africa? Most importantly, when you go all the way around the world and you come all the way right back home, what is waiting for you? Love, love, love from your family, love from your friends, sometimes love from your teacher at school or someone at a community center or a church or a neighbor, Whoever knows, but just like Max, when you go off looking for things and you can sometimes run into monsters, good ones or bad ones, but you can always come back home to love. Oh, I love it. Now, remember when I told you that I know everything there is to know about everything in the whole wide world? Well, it's true. It's true. Now, most people call it magic, but if you're really, really quiet and you listen really, really closely, I will let you in on a little bit of my magic secret. Now, the fact that I know everything about everything in the whole wide world has nothing to do with magic. I'll tell you a thing. When I was, oh dear, four or five years old, my mother bought me a book. She bought me a book. 
I learned to read that first book and I fell in love with the words and with the stories. Pretty soon, I started to read everything that I could get my hands on. Oh dear, I would read oh, the backs of green beans cans. I would read signs on the walls and people's t-shirts. I even read that little piece of paper that came in our VCR box. You, you don't know what a VCR is, do you? <laughs> no worries. Well, it's the same. Oh, don't worry about it. It's before your time. But I would read everything that I could get my hands on. I kept reading and reading and reading. And that is the key to my magic. That is how I came to know everything there is to know about everything in the whole world wide world. Now, there's only one thing that I love to do, almost as much as I love to read. I love to book it. Oh my goodness, okay. Okay, I love to boogie. Now, oh dear, so all of the boogieing that we do, all of the dancing, all of the singing, all of those things, they're only simple mathematics. If you can count to four, then you can be the best boogier in town, I tell you. So let's see here now. Oh, let's practice. Oh dear, I know that you're old enough to count to four. Humor me if you would. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four. And then sometimes we go to eight, but we won't complicate matters. So one, two, three, four. So I am going to teach you my Mrs. Dipsworth's boogie dance. It's called Dip with Mrs. Dipsworth. Now, you will go to your, oh dear, oh, <laughs> go that way. <laughs> All right, so pretend like these are your dancing feet. You're going to go that way. You go one, two, three, four, and then you take your boogie feet back that way. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yes. Now, then we're going to boogie backwards. One, two, three, four. And the last set of four can be any boogie you like. As diverse and different as you are, so should be your boogie. Oh, okay, oh, let's just say that you like to play baseball. Well, your boogie might look like you're throwing a ball. You might go boogie, ooh, boogie, ooh, boogie, ooh, boogie. Oh, yes, oh dear. Oh, what if, what if you like to draw or paint? Your boogie might look like this boogie, yeah, boogie, yeah, boogie. Woo, 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 woo. I get so excited when he gets to this park. Now, I look in the mirror all the time and I think, oh dear, Mrs. Dipsworth, you are becoming mighty round. So, no worries. I do a boogie that is round. So my boogie goes round and round and round and round. <laughs> all right. Now, are you ready? One more time. We're going to go one, two, three, Four, mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, backwards. One, two, three, four, and boogie, two, three, four, boogie, two. Oh, that's more than my four. Are you ready? Oh, let's try it out. Let me hear some good old boogie music. Oh dear, I'm so excited. All right, are you all ready to boogie? I can't hear you. Come on, let's boogie and go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, back. One, two, three, four, and boogie. Two, three, four. Oh, dear. Oh, 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 oh. I went past my four. Oh, oh, let's try it again. Do you want to try it again? Okay. Five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four. Good. One, two, three, four, back. One, two, three, four, and boogie. I want you to pick up a book, 
I want you to read. And therein lies the magic. Therein lies your power to know everything there is to know about everything in the whole wide world. Most importantly, friends, don't ever get too bogged down to boogie. <laughs> Bye-bye. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Oh, yeah. Bye-bye. Oh, see you next time. See you next time.